Happy, I don't even know what day it is. Is it Wednesday, Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday because the trash came today. And it's Tuesday because it was trash day. Seriously, I am losing. Am I the only one losing what day of the week it is? I mean, somebody, I, you know, I woke up on Saturday thinking it was Monday and just totally, totally crazy right now. I think it's because there's like no... Uh, there's no routine. You just wake up. You kind of do the same thing every day. Can't go anywhere. That sort of thing. But we can come here. We can have a virtual tasting. We can get together. Oh, I love this. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Now, today we got a press release. Uh, all, all the whiskey writers got a press release today about uh, about the new product that was hitting the market called uh, Weller. Weller single barrel. Now, as everybody knows, Weller is a very popular brand. It is one that people have been chasing forever. It's got a it's got a historic pedigree to it as well, being connected to Pappy Van Winkle, being traded as uh, you know in the 1800s as well. I mean, it's it's got a pedigree for a bourbon, and you know it's pretty well sought after. It has the same recipe as Pappy. Of course, Pappy is what everybody loses their shit over these days. And most people lose their shit over anything from Buffalo Trace. But as soon as I put this out there, as soon as I put it out there that the uh, that the world was now going to get a Weller single barrel, I mean, people lost their shit. And I, I'm just going to read to you some of the tweets that I got um, that I got put out here. Um, this is from Andrew Clark. I uh, said, so this is going to be awesome. I haven't seen anything else. Uh, oh, he's talking about the YouTube tonight. So, Andrew, I hope you're doing well. Python DS says, meh. Um, we've got Brent Clayton saying, ugh, a cork stopper. TCA, it happens. Um, Connor Ellington says, another Weller I'll only ever taste in my dreams. And it goes on and on and on again. Uh, one guy, David Putty, Actually, has a pretty good comment. Regular OAW uh, original Weller Antique is widely available. People just hoard it like it's some kind of miracle nectar so they can sell it to make $40. If people would quit you know, treating Buffalo Trace products like they are the second coming of Christ and buy something else, then maybe there would be balance. Look, I mean, those are just a few of the comments. Um, you, you could go in any of the forums and, and any kind of bourbon social media and people are losing their mind on it and there's true there's an element to like people you know buying these like high-end products and flipping them and everybody kind of like associates weller with that but i asked the question is it weller's fault is it you know buffalo trace's fault i would say that maybe they could raise their srp to like you know derail some of that a little bit but the fact is their whiskey is usually really 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 good and Weller is oftentimes exceptional. Now, I did a little digging on this one. This product will not be available as of now for any kind of single barrel. Uh, so this, this is not gonna be available in like a single barrel pick. It's uh, 97 proof. It's basically OWA, but 10, point, 10, point, 10 proof points lower than OWA. So same recipe, seven years old range. And um, in the members only section, after, after we do this tasting, in the members only area, we're going to do a taste off between Weller Antique and the Weller Single Barrel. Now, so I mentioned that I got this, I got this press release today, I put it up there. We got all of this, all of this commentary coming back. Everybody wanted to, everybody wanted to chime in and say, Great, another Weller I can't get. A lot, of, a lot of truth to that. But 
doesn't mean I'm not going to taste it. So I get this uh, notification from Buffalo Trace that the UPS man had tried to deliver a package to me and it didn't happen. So I had to end up driving across town to, um, to UPS where I went in the store, washed my hands, put on my mask and got my bottle. And uh, so that was probably the strangest, one of the stranger bottle pickups I've ever had. So the other things that I am tasting tonight, you know, I would say, you know, like I, I don't like just tasting one thing. Um, and, and so I just pulled a couple things off of the shelf. Uh, this one apparently has been sitting on my shelf for a year now. And uh, so my apologies to the broad, uh, the broad branch distillery in North Carolina for not opening this up yet and uh, giving it a taste. Uh, thank you for sending it. So this is a this this is a really this is a bizarre sourced whiskey. Okay, so guys, this is actually this is distilled. This is distilled in the state of Washington. How many how many sourced whiskeys come from Washington? I mean, there's not a lot. And then it's aged and bottled uh, by B Broad Branch in uh, Winston uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina. So, um, so I actually spent some time in Winston Salem, uh, North Carolina, when I was doing that uh, when I was doing that uh, episode on moonshiners. I was out there at the old, uh, you know, Saint Nick Distillery. So, we're gonna give this a taste. It's called uh, Broad Branch Rye Fidelity. It is 90 proof, six years old. Now, I can't think of a lot of distilleries in Washington that could pull off a six-year-old. Uh, rye whiskey um, I mean so that's a that's a pretty 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 short list very very lovely smell um, it smells like maple syrup Yeah, Woodenville, a speakeasy. There we go. Yeah, Woodenville, that's a good uh, speakeasy brings up a good point. Woodenville is a distillery that has been around long enough. So Bainbridge, Woodenville, Westland, but they they weren't they were never making rye whiskey. Uh, to my you know R Westland's pretty much always done uh, single malt. There might have been a time they experimented with a little rye. You know, I really, that's what I love about doing these live tastings. It's like you all are talking to me. I'm talking back. It's like a conversation, but I, I miss it. I wrote about this in my blog yesterday, and I've got this whole new tasting series with uh, Topeka.Live, which puts on virtual concerts. I miss being in front of people so much, and this has helped me. Doing these tastings has helped me immensely, you know, in terms of like, you know, just kind of like my mental health because when you take away when you take away someone's passion and what they love doing i mean it sucks and so as much as i can i've came i've come here to like talk with you all and sip some whiskey yeah okay so maple syrup uh, a little bit of uh apple some baked apple there Oh boy. Wow. Wow, that is good. Baked apple pie, cinnamon, rye bread with a pat of uh, butter on it. Just a hint of cinnamon and a little bit of smoke. I love this, but it's the kind of smoke that you would get from like a barbecue, not like a peat. I think peat is when people are explaining their whiskeys, I think they really mean some type of barbecue smoke. Um, but my goodness, that is really nice. I like that a lot. So while I have you all here, I appreciate you coming. Uh, this is, you know, like Nathan Russell says, I miss the people. I miss everybody. I miss hanging out. I miss the crowd of bars. I miss all this. And I know it's not much, but I, I do live tastings as much as I can. 
click the subscribe button to get notified when I'm doing them because I don't always plan them. I'm not the best planner in the world. This was really an impromptu, um, really impromptu. Hmm. I want to give this another taste because I it really, really, it really tasted special to me. Uh, I love the nose, had that maple syrup nose, and then I got it on there and it was like baked apple pie, some cinnamon, some uh, rye toast with a pat of butter, and it's uh, just a hint of smoke. I really like this. Folks, I regret not tasting this last year. Um, this would have been in my whiskeys of the year competition last year. That's how high I'm uh, how high I'm on this. This is the Broad Branch Rye Fidelity 100% uh, straight rye, aged and you know I mean I don't have a lot of information on it, but six years old, distilled in Washington, aged in uh, North Carolina. It is really good, especially if you like apple pie. If you don't like apple pie, if you don't like the notes of apples. And you don't like the, uh, like a hint of smoke with a touch of cinnamon, stay away from this whiskey. But if you like those notes, you're gonna love it. I really do think so. All right, so we've had a we've had some people here comment tonight. Andrew Clark uh, brings out the um, brings out the point that the members in my YouTube section are the ones who actually decided what I was tasting tonight. That's 1,000% true. The, I put a poll up in the members only section. Members get to decide on what I taste. And in fact, Friday, I haven't announced it yet, but Friday they voted on me having an MGP taste off. So I'm going to taste some things uh, from all over the, you know, from all over the MGP spectrum. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna just pull all the MGP products that I have in my office and taste it so yeah okay so here's what we're tasting now when i first got this when I, I got this bottle today okay i got this bottle today and i didn't quite it didn't quite make sense to me because um when he, when i see republic of uh restaurants and then i see um and i see burrow my first thought was like what is this? You know, because I, I, it was just like, it was not processing in my brain that this was going to be a, uh, a bourbon. And so it's a, it's a, a straight bourbon. It's, this is a, this is produced and uh, bottled by, it doesn't have a, you don't use the terms um, distilled. Let me see if I can find that here anywhere. Um, it's an Armagnac cask finish, and throughout the label it says women owned, crowdfunded. I fully support that. As you all know, I wrote the book Whiskey Women. Uh, that's probably the crowning achievement of my career, is that I was able to, to bring to the forefront a lot of incredible women um, who, whom the world had never heard of. So, all right, going to give this a pour. So Armagnac is a yes, that's right. This is a Washington. This is Washington D.C. Washington D.C. Uh, but they do not use the term. This they use the terms uh, produced and bottled by. They don't use the language uh, distilled. Uh, at least um, I am not seeing the language that says uh, uh, distilled in Washington D.C. So. Just a little bit of nitpicky label uh, label things there on my end. So Eric Z says uh, it's source whiskey finished in DC. That's exactly where it's exactly where my head was at. What I was thinking finished in cognac barrels. So okay, so this is a new product. I got it in the mail today with not a lot of information or a lot of time to do some digging on this.
But I said, hey, let's throw it in the tasting. New glass. Oh. Oh, my. Ooh. That's kind of frisky. Um, so the Armagnac note there, um, you know, the plums, the uh, apricots, um, they, they came through nicely. I would like to know more about the original uh, bourbon, um, but... No, people are asking me if I use a different glass. No, I, I got a different glass. This is the old, this is the other glass. This is the new glass. Well, maybe I already poured it. I don't know. But I already... Okay, since you all are so concerned that I use the uh, double glass there. Okay, so maybe there was something in that glass already. Look, I'm so focused on clicking buttons and looking in the camera and then, you know, all these other things. So what, I had, uh, I had a little something in the glass. Maybe it was the same stuff. I mean, I don't know. You don't know. For all we know, it could have been. Okay, I definitely had something. That definitely was not that whiskey in the glass. <laughs> all right. I, uh, I might have did a no-no. All right, so here we go. This is the, here we go. This is a, this is a new tasting. You know, I really do like this. Um, I like, I really like the, um, I like the plum. There's a really nice plum note in this. You don't get a lot of plum in American whiskey. You find that in wines and a lot of brandies, but you don't get it in American whiskey. So it's refreshing to get a little bit of a plum note. And then, you know, a little bit of dried apricot, but this is a weird note to get in, in a whiskey. Parmesan cheese. Get like a hit of Parmesan cheese up in here. All right. So that's nice. I don't know the price point on it. That's nice. I'd say if it's under 40 bucks, grab it. If it's above that, you know. You know, that's it depends on how much that money you need, you know. And I do I do want to say that tonight I was, because I had to go and get the bottle and all that, I was woefully unprepared for, you know, talking about these other two bottles. Uh, but I am ready to talk about Weller. And the, the Weller world, it is, it really is driven by, this is, this is the product that 10 years ago, 10 years ago, this is what we bourbon nerds drank and you know i talk a lot about this in this week's uh, bourbon pursuits uh, above the char so if you don't subscribe to above or if you don't subscribe to bourbon pursuit man you're missing out go go subscribe in fact go on over to the youtube and check that out too kenny and ryan do great reviews themselves and uh, i want to share the, one of the story one of my favorite stories about weller is that you know, my good friend, Bourbon Hall of Famer, you all know him, Chuck Cowdery. We were walking, uh, we were walking through the uh, Sazerac uh, warehouse one time. And there's a case of Wella right there. And, you know, he's a big old boy. He's a big boy. And he just runs over to it and puts his arms around it and just absolutely, uh, just absolutely goes crazy about it. Um, yep, hey, how's it going? Yep. And uh, he just absolutely goes crazy about being around Weller. 
And it was so cool for me at the time. You know, I was I was just kind of making my own in in the whiskey world, but to see to see Chuck Cowdery, someone I had idolized for so long, to have such an affection for a whiskey, it made me feel normal because Weller was one of those that I too had an affection for. Of course, back then we could buy Weller 12 year old like we can basically, you know, Woodford Reserve today. I mean, it was everywhere. And um, yeah, it was it was really, really cool to be able to just go and drink that really good whiskey so easily back then. Of course, today with the bourbon boom, there's been a lot of hype around Weller. And I would, I would dare say uh, there's been a lot of people who aren't really into bourbon just by Weller because they heard it's good and they just sit on it. There's a, there's a lot of media around it. Um, I'm as guilty about it as anybody. I mean, I'm doing this live stream, uh, but I think people get so upset. They get so upset they can't get a bottle that they tend to forget it's really good whiskey. Now, there are people who don't like it. I mean, that's fine. You can go check out a video I did the other day. Basically, I asked Twitter, like, what's a bourbon you hate and why? And it was basically every bourbon there is. So, it, I mean, it doesn't matter what, what, it's out, what, what is out there because we all have different flavor profiles. We all have different palates. We, have all, we all have different likes. I mean, there are people who taste like Laphroaig and taste Band-Aids, you know? So you have to understand that everybody tastes things differently. And it's okay if you hate Weller, but it's okay if you love it. And this is the latest product. Let's see, let's see what it's all about. Oh, we got a few questions coming in here. Might, might as well answer them. Rare Bird, a member, also Rare Bird, David Jennings, everybody. He's got a new book out. You gotta go check it out. Go to wildturkeybook.com. That's wildturkeybook.com. Go check out my friend's book. You're going to love it. It is all about wild turkey and the Russell family. He's such a great guy. Go support him if you can. Um, he's very active in our community, in the whiskey community, so go check him out. Uh, do you think the quality of Weller in general has gone down since its popularity has increased? Um, actually, my personal opinion on this is that Weller, I, I think, I think, well, there's a few, I think people picking Weller barrels um, have done a bad job. Uh, so like, I, I have, the, the only bad Weller products I have has, has been some like bourbon club, like, man, we picked this, we picked this, um, this Weller barrel the other day, man, it was so good, you gotta taste it. And it's just like, it's like, it was horrible. You know, and it, it, was, it was over oak. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that's happened. So the majority of the bad wellers that I have had have not been store bought. They have not been. Um, they've not been the special reserve, um, the twelve year old. The majority of the bad wellers I have had have been store picks or bourbon club picks, and and I've actually been on quite a few barrel picks for Weller. And what I have noticed is. What I've noticed is that, you know, people, when it, it, picking a barrel is a different palate than liking the whiskey. You have to understand what will happen to that barrel in, in some time. And you need to know, like, also your limits. Some people, you know, have like three or four, you know, sips and they're three sheets to, uh, three sheets to the wind. So, yeah. Oh, you know, Clinton Kincaid says, I've gotten a few corked wellers since the change of the bottle. Now, that's interesting. Um, I think the, you know, there is a bit of a misnomer about what corked is. And, you know, we see a cork there and it's like, hmm, yeah, that's got to be it. I mean, sometimes it's just over oaked and, and it's okay. But if you're getting like, if you are getting what you perceive to be a cork note, I challenge you to actually dissect that note and to see if like maybe it's actually just over oaked and it's just a bad barrel. I challenge you to look into that. All right. Um, you know what, James Miller, James Miller brings up a good point. 
I said sheets wrong. It's sheets. All right. <laughs> I hope I did that one right. Thanks for commenting, James. Uh, so Dean, Dean is uh, new to new to whiskey, and he's always asking these great questions in the chats, and he's in the member, he's in the member forums. He's asking all these wonderful questions, and he's he's really eager to learn. He asked the question, "What is over oak?" Over oak is when it is the whiskey is inside the barrel for too long. Now, every barrel ages differently, and there's a lot of technology out there. There's a lot of efforts to figure out why that is. But the barrels come from different trees. They're aged in different places in the warehouse. And so the whiskey can penetrate different parts of the wood and extract different tannins and different lignans uh, in, in different ways. And so when we say something is over oaked, that basically means we taste too much of the wood in that particular product. You'll hear that said a lot about a things lot, about a lot of whiskeys that are over 15 years old. Now in Scotch, it's quite a bit different because they're going into used barrels, and American whiskeys are going to new charred oak barrels. So those virgin barrels actually, you know, the whiskey pin get, get, gets deeper into the wood and extracts a lot more, and so that's why there's more potential to be over oaked into American whiskey. Uh, Brett uh, asks. Uh, do you believe it will be easier for regular folk to get this new Weller single barrel, or should we give up now? Um, you know, I'm, I'm always torn about this. I'm always torn about this. Um, my common answer was to go to a bar first and see if you liked it, but you know, that that's going away. Uh, I also do know that things are shifting in the way products are being distributed. You know, you things are getting front loaded onto retailers as we're waiting for off print or on premise as, or restaurants as we call them. Um, we're, we're waiting for them to get back online. And it's a, I think there might be more availability. I really, really do. I think there might be more availability of a lot of the allocated products than there have been in the past with a few exceptions there are a lot of brands who are deciding to pull back and to not mm, to not put their stuff out there because they don't want to perceive to be taking advantage of situation or doing the wrong thing during a pandemic and so every company is doing it differently buffalo trace has said and i actually i'm like you know what go on as business as usual when it comes to whiskey because there are going to be people who buy it and the people who buy it the and the system the retailers need it if it makes it to a restaurant they need that revenue uh there's a lot there's a lot of things that this touches you know that has an impact on the economy of those respective areas so Although, like, I'll just take Shorewood Liquors, for example, my good friend in uh, Minnesota. So if he gets two bottles of this, for example, he's got bourbon fans. You know, maybe he has 200 people who try to get this bottle. They don't get it. Uh, two of them get it. And the rest of them say, well, you know what? Darn. Do you have Angel's Envy or something like that? So this can have, like, uh, an impact on an economy uh, for like a small little pocket, like a micro economy. And we can't forget that because at the end of the day, there's a lot of businesses struggling. And uh, I hate to go down that road, but it's, it's a fact. So I'll take one more question uh, before I get to the uh, Weller uh, single barrel. And of course, as I mentioned before at the top, the Weller Antique, and well, our single barrel are going to face off in the members only, in a members only live stream. So I hope if you're not a member, I hope you come on over, and um, and, and and taste with us. Now, Bob, Bob brings up the the uh, the the corked Elmer. I could still kill my friend who gave me the corked uh, Elmer T. Lee. Uh, this ain't going to be the question. But so he gives me this corked uh, Elmer T. Lee, and I have my tasting with Mick Fleetwood in a couple days, and my palate was shot. 
it was shot. So, Max, I love you, but I'm not mad at you anymore, but I still have PTSD from that, I guess. Um, so, this is, um, oh, here we go. Look at this. Alan got a Weller uh, Special Reserve for uh, for 28 bucks. Uh, Terry uh, Lawrence asks, is there an age statement with this? No, they're not doing an age statement with it, but because it is a single barrel, you know, you're going to, I'm I'm hopeful that you might, we might be able to track the age but they're not going to uh as far as i know they're not going to put that on there and and um it, but it's it's gonna it's in the seven year old range all right guys here i go i'll go ahead and pour this now It's coming out of there. Sounds good. You know, Darren brings up a really good point. He can't wait for, um, he sarcastically says he can't wait for Atlanta retailers to charge $400 for it. And folks, that's the problem. The problem is, is this stuff, this stuff has such demand on it um, that they, the people who get it, the SRP on this is $49.99. And I don't want to give too much away of it, but this is my whole above the char for Bourbon Pursuit on Thursday. So you all have to make sure you're subscribing to Bourbon Pursuit, the podcast. You don't want to miss that. I give my opinion on um, on the SRP and retailers charging for it. But I'll just say this. Um, Buffalo Trace does do their SRPs with a, with a thought that a hope that you will be able to get a bottle and and i applaud that but the realistic stand the realistic aspect is atlanta retailer guy is going to charge 400 bucks for it it is what it is and i'm not a lot of things we can do about it graham's tuning in from scotland okay so right off the nose i'm picking up nutmeg now nutmeg is not a, a note i typically associate with uh weller weller tends to be a very caramel forward very vanilla you know centric whiskey for me but the note of nutmeg is is always nice i love nutmeg mm. Mm. Brendan Hogan asks uh, Fred shouldn't the distributor follow up and potentially block buyers from doing that and blacklist them here's the thing is that that does happen that does happen uh, but you also have the same distributors who are trying to meet quotas and that guy is selling a shitload of a particular vodka and they're like okay well you get your bottle and they look the other way i think distributors you know should be a little bit more on top of this now this is what i find interesting price fixing in the 1940s and 50s was a big issue in american whiskey and it focused on the distillers the price fixing scandals of the 1940s basically set in motion what we have today and that uh, American distillers cannot dictate what their prices will be. Whereas Mac, Mac can say, you ain't charging anything below this Best Buy for our new uh, MacBook Pro. So because there were so many distillers trying to work together to you know, basically game the system, the federal government put a lot of price laws on distilleries. And so they're, they're re they cannot communicate what a retailer should price for. I still think it happens, but whatever. All right, I got to I got to get back into tasting whiskey here. Now I'm going to get all pissed off about, you know, unethical retailers. 
Okay, now that caramel's setting in. So we got that nutmeg note, right? It's there. It's right there. It's there the whole time. But then underneath that, you got a wave of caramel. Real nice wave of caramel. And like a pie coming out of the oven. Like the, you can smell the singe crust on the side. Hmm. Oh, shit. Hmm. Oh boy. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Shit. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. This is gorgeous. This is really gorgeous. Now it's a single barrel and you have to you have to put that into in in, in into your mind and I'm just one person but um this is drop dead down your palate all encompassing of your every inch of your palate it's like dripping down like butter it's fuck it's good mm So the nose, the palate, very flavorful. Uh, pied crust, you know, on the so you got my thoughts on the palate or on the nose, but on the palate we're talking pie crust, um, the fried chocolate pies. You know, it's like there's there's like a there's like a chocolate nutmeg um, caramel filling. Um, it, you know, it's it, it, it's really down that sweet path. The nutmeg is the closest thing that we have to a spice, and that is a spice technically, but it doesn't really come off with any kind of spice. Uh, Lance Dury says, same guy who chose Dickel as Whiskey of the Year. Uh, that's incorrect, Lance. That was not me. Uh, my whiskey of the year was King of Kentucky last year. So, yeah. I will say... I will say um, that this does have a bit of... Um, like, if it's going to be in like any kind of competition or if it's like in a blind flight um if it's um if it's going to be like in some kind of like flight amongst your friends i don't know if it wins because um competitions are usually won by finish they're usually won by something that kind of lasts for a while and I don't know if this has the kind of finish. Like this is this is a nuanced whiskey. This is delicious in every way, uh, but that finish it just it's subtle and it lasts. But it's not like you know I brought up King of Kentucky. It's not like King of Kentucky, which just. I mean I think I could taste that thing two days later, um, but. So this this does this does not have. I keep reaching for the antique. Uh, this does not have. So it's got it's got the nose. It's got an amazing palate, and the finish is long. I'm just saying that 
it's 97 proof. 97 proof. So for someone who does not think, for someone who thinks that 107 proof is too much, my God, are you going to love this? You are going to love this. Um, but for most of us grizzled uh, whiskey drinkers, I think you might still be leaning toward antique. Um, I really do. I'm going to be tasting that off here in a minute in the members only chat. But um, closest I'll get to tasting this is how he burps and describes the smell. Listen, I haven't, have I burped yet? Did I burp? I don't think I burped. Did I describe the smell if I did burp? <laughs> Listen, I will tell you, I will tell you, I, I don't think you should really give your hopes up on uh, not getting this bottle. I think it will be available. Um, I think you need to be positioned well with your retailer. Um, I think that you, um, I think you might, I don't know. I think, I think, I think you might be able to get it. I really do. Now, Jim, Jim brings up a good point. Burp nosing is only in the after party. <laughs> oh. Now, listen, this is my battle buddy from Iraq. He's heard me burp a few times amongst other things. He's saying, do not burp. Man, the shit he's got on me. Now, here's something I haven't announced yet. Uh, but Brian is uh, Brian's going to come on. So my, this is my battle buddy. You can see his name up on the screen. It's my battle buddy in Iraq. Um, he lost his son in Iraq shortly after we came home, Sergeant Ryan Jopek. And, and um, <laughs> shit, I'm going to lose it. You know, and there's not, it's not, not a day that goes by that I don't think about him or think about my, my battle buddy. And on, uh, on Sunday, um, we're going to do a uh, memorial. Um, we're going to do a memorial, memorial live stream. Uh, he's Bardstown Bourbon Company is going to send uh, send some whiskey to uh, to Brian, and we're going to we're going to taste and share the memories of the fallen. And it's important that you all remember that Memorial Day is not about the veterans. It's not. It's about remembering those who passed away in the service of their country. And it sure in the shit isn't about buying a fucking mattress or a goddamn car. Excuse my language, but that shit pisses me off. So you can be on the lookout for that uh, coming up on a live stream. All right, so any questions coming in before we head on over? Uh, Matt Ray asked, compared to Weller 12 year old, I don't think I have Weller 12 in the office. Um, I can go check. You want me to take a quick look in the office to see if, um, if I have any Weller 12 year old? Of course, the members only section is going to get the antique taste off, but if we have any 12 year old, it might be in here unless my wife came in and stole it. So let me go check. Let me go check on that. Uh, I'll play you guys some. Um, I'll play you some uh, special song here. Yeah.
you're new to bourbon there's a term you need to know called tater all right so tater is a term that's used for people who go out and buy you know things above the srp extravagantly and they're just chasing uh particular bottles and or they there's a lot of things that you it's a derogatory term then it's basically meant to you know i think just be like Fuck you, you're a tater. Congratulations, you got a bottle of Weller. Great, you got a bottle of Weller shipped to you. Fuck you. You know, and <laughs> look, man, I, I, I actually I actually think it's funny. I, I, I really do, and I've been called a tater. That's fine. Um, and I've called people taters, uh, but it's uh, it, it's funny. And my friend Wade Woodard has a, has a uh, blog called Tater Talk, and he explains all about it. I, he was the one who coined the term, but he really kind of made it famous in the bourbon world. And I, you know, man, this is the world we live in. We all make fun of each other all the time. And if you, if you, if you take it personally, then, you know, I mean, there are ways to be mean on social media and stuff that kind of, um, that goes, you know, too far. Um, but, um, you know, uh yes members only so gary pina pina uh he uh members only get a taste off between weller single barrel and the weller antique so anyway i was um i was getting the i was coming down to the the reason why i picked this is that this was one of the what they call a quintessential tater bottle. Um, this is the, I think this is batch, yeah, this is batch eight, Kentucky Alp Bourbon, batch eight. Um, and um, so that is one of the bottles that people really consider tater liquid. And this is uh, one that everybody was calling out in the chat as being like the next, ta the tater chaser. And you know, man, I don't know. I, I think I don't think this is going to be a tater chaser. I really don't. I think Kentucky Owl will always be, but I, I think the single barrel, the single barrel is going to be a haunt. I think it's going to be something that people. I think the single barrel is going to be what makes people in the bourbon community who are the geeks really respect Weller, um, because. You know, it has a chance to miss. It has a big chance to miss because it's 90, 97 proof. Okay, so in nosing these two, 
Uh, Kentucky Owl is way over oaked. I'm just smelling oak out of the ass on uh, on this one. Oh man, man, the the owl's not doing well for me. I mean, I'm just gonna taste that uh, that first. That first rye I had, I'm ticking that. I'm I'm picking that. Uh, I might pick that rye over that one might have been like the bottle been pretty well drained got you know, got a little bit left there but yeah if I'm uh, if I'm if I am uh, picking between the two uh, I am going with uh, Weller being the winner. So, and that was not hard. I'm going to have a little bit more. Well, everyone, I want to thank you all so much for joining me. This was awesome. Awesome. I had a great time with you tonight. Uh, I really, really enjoyed sipping some whiskey, answering some questions. Um, I apologize if I wasn't able to get to your question. I will try to next time, but you gotta remember it's just me doing all this, juggling all these things, and I am drinking whiskey, which has uh, an effect on your ability to pay attention to other things other than the whiskey. So, you have to remember that. But we will be doing the Weller Antique versus the uh, Weller single barrel here in the coming round. I think um, I think it is going to be a great taste off. I cannot wait to taste it, but if you're not a member, you're going to miss it, and this will be eligible for all members. So, Ascot up. Mar we have the the levels of membership are Ascot, Marzipan, and Singling. And if you know what a Singling is then you read one of my books. So, good for you. Ah, this is great. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Please be safe out there. Click that subscribe button, click like, all that crap, and then join me on the member side, and let's, uh, you know, the ascot comes off a little bit more there, and we'll, uh, we'll taste some whiskey. But as you go out, remember, do not lick trash cans. That's really important. I hear a lot of people are licking trash cans these days. That's not good. You don't want to do that. And do not lick handrails. Everybody's touching those handrails. Don't lick them. And it's most important that you know, you know that in the bottom of your heart, vodka sucks. I mean, it sucks unless, unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. All right, everybody. I will see you later. I've got a big celebrity taste off coming up on thursday cannot wait to tell you about that unfortunately i'm under embargo and i can't tell you now cheers be safe vodka